Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Bring it on in, people. Bring it on in. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bring it on in. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Keep on dropping in. Keep on dropping in. Good morning, Jess. I'm on early today. I got, I've been up. I've been up. Been up. And I'm saying early. I'm just a minute on early. <laughs> Technically, I'll start this for another minute. Good morning, everybody. Keep keep dropping in. Keep dropping in. Nobody told me I was crazy loud yesterday on the uh, on the live stream when I went back and listened to it. I was like, Jesus, because it didn't sound like on my iPad while we was live. So hopefully today, you know, I don't sound like I'm the Kool-Aid man busting through a brick wall. Good morning, and it's 8.15. It's 8.15. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all know how we do. Let's start our positive affirmations of the day, of the day, of the day. Okay, I'm trying to fix this chair. Start our positive affirmations of the day. All the new people that's coming in, I'll start the phrase and you guys end it on your end. Make sure you're saying it audibly and vocally to where it actually can work. You know, so if I say, I am, good morning, Kimmy. If I say, I am, you say whatever you need. I am strong. I am courageous. I am beautiful. I am abundant. Whatever you need for today. Because there's something in the air today, and we need a whole bunch of something. So good morning, everybody. So I'll start it off. I am. I will be. I need. I want. I am grateful for. I am thankful for. I will have. And I am. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all see we on time today. Normally, I'm getting y'all kind of cranked up at 8.15. I, like I told Jess, Jess was the first person up in here. I said, shoot. I'm, I've been up since this morning. I'm up, up. You know, I, I actually got on, on the live at 8.14. We, shoot, we good today. We real good. But uh, I'll, that's another thing. I'm so glad so many of y'all tuned, tuned in yesterday. Thank y'all for coming in yesterday with uh, our special guest, Dion. It was amazing, other than, like, the few little te technical difficulties that we had. I'm just so thankful that so many people showed up and so many people not only engaged and had, the, you know, it was in the comment section. Comment section was booming. That's probably the most interactive comment section we didn't ever had. But um, the comment section was booming. Everything was lit. Like, we had such a good time yesterday, y'all. And <laughs> right a whole minute earlier, we had such a good time. Um, yesterday, man, a conversation was great. I got people, you know, like I got way more people I have in mind that I want to eventually start coming through and like eventually have, um, at least three people at a time too, to where we can get a whole bunch of perspectives going at one time. But I love the momentum of the live stream. I love the momentum of the crowd. I love where things are going. And I'm just so grateful that you guys are tuning in and that you guys are de dedicating your mornings with me, you know, cause you could be doing anything else with your time, but you guys are dedicating your mornings with me. I'm grateful, you know, and I'm just happy at the end of the day. Reach one, teach one, like I say. That's all we've been doing, just trying to get more information rolling and get things moving to where we can actually be on this thing and be pressing forward. But for today, we're going to talk about relationships, kind of piggybacking off of what we, what Dion and I talked about yesterday. But I kind of want to start from an attraction level, right? I want to I want to talk about how to get a partner. Not really. And I don't and I'm not perfect, y'all. You know, a lot of people be like, well, who are you to say how to blah, 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 blah. I, this is just my opinion through life experiences, what I've learned and stuff like that. What I feel as though certain people need to hear. Good morning, Joy. Um, But. I will say I will say this before we go inside of it to each his own, you know, the things we're going to be saying, the things we're going to be talking about. It can be it can be taken a whole bunch of ways, depending on the type of person that you're in the perspective that you have. But I feel as though what we're going to talk about today can and will be something that can be beneficial for everybody listening. So I would I would say start by this. Learn how to give yourself what you feel as though you want from somebody else. You know, you can't teach people 
or you can't attract somebody who who's going to give you what you want slash need. Excuse me. And you haven't experienced that for yourself on your own. And also, before we even go any further with that, do know that a partner should not be 100 percent of where your joy and satisfaction comes from. That's just being completely dependent on somebody else to fulfill your life or to make you happy or to make you feel a certain type of way or make you feel like you got something done in life. Like a partner should be there to add to aid, help you fix and progress forward. All you all you have is a partner. All you have is somebody that's deciding to be with you through your evolution and you're deciding to be with them through their evolution. It doesn't get any deeper than that. A lot of people like to get really like you see people that's constantly in relationships can't be single too long. That's because they're missing something on the inside. They're, they're really, really and truly lonely, you know, and they're trying to fill a void with somebody or something rather than with themselves or with the inner peace and the inner time that comes with finding out who you really are. You know, it's like you can't sit there and complain about, well, I keep attracting these type of guys or I keep attracting these type of women and I can never find me a good person to be in a relationship with. But you haven't really dealt with everything about you. You know, and I'm not saying you got to be perfect to attract somebody. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you're not going to you're not going to start attracting what you want until you're consecutively well, consistently working on yourself at points in time. You know, I noticed for me, I was I was in and out of relationships, especially in like in college. I was in and out of relationships, you know, like just going through the motions, getting what I felt as though I needed from that person. And like and really, it was just me getting what I wanted from that person. You know, and just whatever happened, happened. Not really thinking, you know, long term. I really thinking about how to actually be with somebody, you know. But I, it, it was the time a little bit after I got to college. And then I really started just being to myself. Not really worried about dating. Not really worried about being with nobody. And just really focusing on myself, you know. what, How do I want my career to go? How do I want to be as a young man? You know, what do I, where, what and where do I see myself? What do I want to do? And I started just focusing on me and then boop. You know, who I needed came out of nowhere, literally came out of nowhere, you know. But I say all that to say we have such a, a a false sense of what relationships and love is these days. Like, for one, we compare too much, way too much. We should not be comparing our relationships to others or what we feel as though is the ideal man to others or the ideal women to others. Because at the end of the day, what you need from a partner isn't something that somebody else per se needs. Y'all may have a lot of similarities or a lot of core features that most people want in relationships. But when you're when you're looking for your partner, when you're looking for your, you know, your significant other, it's one of the things or when you're trying to say look for when you're trying to attract, when you're trying to attract them. What people fail to realize is the inner workings that you're doing on yourself and the things that you're providing for yourself and how you're functioning as your own person unconsciously attracts who and what you're looking for. Because in that situation, you're not what I'm doing, stand up. You're not looking for or you're not actively looking for somebody at more so than you're passively looking for them. And I'm and I'm I think I'm speaking more so for the women because I feel as though, you know, I'm old school. I feel as though the guy should be the person that pursues the women. And nothing's wrong with women pursuing men, you know, like if you if you that type of chick, I mean do that. You know, but like I, that goes back to what I said. You know, it's it's different things for different people. I feel like you're gonna move how you're going to naturally move how your partner needs you to move in life, you know, but at the same time, you have to be prepared to understand that the person that you are choosing to be with, you know, they've had a life. They're having a life. You know, they're going through the motions of life as well. They're still probably figuring themselves out. Like we need to drop the notion that the people that we're going to be dating or going through life with are perfect or they're everything just because they're, they seem as though everything you need or everything you want they can't do no wrong or they, you know, they can't, they can't just be on the bad side of life sometimes. And I feel like that's a flaw when it comes down to us attracting people and attracting what we need in relationships, because nothing about that is realistic. Nothing about getting somebody and then like, Oh, my life is going to go on perfectly and everything is going to move how it needs to move. And is that in the third that don't exist. That really don't exist. You know, because if it did, we'd all be in perfect relationships happy you know there wouldn't be all these slogans of men ain't this and women ain't this and she for the streets and hop off bop, all that type of stuff like we wouldn't have those things but we live in a real world with real people going through real life so we need to make sure that we're taking all of that into consideration now, i'm not saying 
you know, fix, be try to be the fixer of every person that you're going to be with. But at the same time, you know, you have to be mindful that you're not perfect. You know, like you got to think about what that person has to deal with on your end. You know, like we always like to paint, especially during breakups, we always like to paint the bad picture of the other person, but we never really paint the picture of like what we were doing or who we are, what we needed to fix. What were our red flags? You know, so whenever you get in relationships or like you're chasing somebody and then like you keep noticing, good morning, mama. And you keep noticing a uh, red flag after red flag and stuff like that. And most people don't tend to look at what they're doing on their side. Like I said the other day with me in past relationships, I can be very stubborn. That was one of my, my red flags was coming from me is like I can be very, very stubborn or I can just be very tunnel vision to where it's like it's not that I'm a neglectful person. But it's like I have my fo- my level of focus is insane. It's like when I get tunnel vision, I get tunnel vision. And that's just how I am, you know. So whenever it comes down to attracting somebody or being with a, somebody else or being with another person, you know, you have to keep in mind that you're not perfect. You're not perfect. You'll you'll never be perfect, but you're always striving to be a better version of yourself. And that person needs to also stay striving to be a better person, because if not, you're going to have these constant, not really ups and downs, but these constant plateaus because it's going to be one of the things to where it's like, okay, I'm trying to move forward. And it feels like I'm dragging you along the way. I'm trying to express to you what I need and what I want. And you're not getting it. And this, that, and the third. Now I understand some people could be slow, you know, not everybody catch on the quickest and stuff like that. But you know, if it's consistent, I'll say this, you need to watch your partners or whoever you're attracting or talking to or whatever, watch their actions more than their words. One of the biggest things I wish I would have started doing a lot sooner in my life rather than now, but I need to go through life to figure it out. I wish I would have talked less and watched more. Granted, like, you know, I, I'm already like that, but it's like I wish I would have did it more. I wish I would have, you know, even though somebody says they're sorry or somebody says like you express yourself to somebody and they say they say, oh, yeah, well, I hear you, blah, 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 blah. You know, well, we're going to work on it. And like not even the next day. They're not trying to do nothing. You know, it's like it's the same stuff. It's the same motions. It's the same notions. It's the same everything. It's like that right there, especially if, if I have to bring it. If I had a deep conversation, I've been in a, I've been I was in this relationship. I ain't gonna say her name. I was in a relationship with this girl in college. I want to say my sophomore year of college, I want to say. And it was kind of, it was going pretty good. You know, it was going pretty, pretty good. And then, you know, we had kind of hit a wall because, like, I didn't like the fact that I tried to really express myself. I really tried to express myself. You know, it's like I was like, yo, I don't feel connected with you right now because you just on some other stuff. I'm trying to understand you. You're very closed off. You know, it's like you just you're doing things and you saying this, but your actions not line up with you say. And, you know, I'm telling her how like I feel disconnected, but I want it to work. You know, what can we do this, that and the third? And she just looking at me like this. She just staring at me, you know, she's like, oh, OK, well, all right. I was like literally just saying, OK, all right, well, I'll try to do better. And then like, you know, you I'm telling you what you can't like. You're not it's like it's one thing to be like, oh, I'll try to do better. But like you never asked. You never act like that. And that's what I'm talking about with the actions. It's like I don't want to just hear like, OK, I'll try this and the third. Why are you not asking questions? Why are you not taking the actions to be like, OK, well, what am I doing wrong? OK, well, what do you well, what do you feel as though you need more from me? What do we need to how do we understand this? Or at least by the next day, you know, try to do something to, to like show me that, you know, I feel because my, my biggest thing in relationships is I like I like feeling seen and I like feeling appreciated. So consistency is the way to keep me. Consistency is the way to like really like catch my attention because I like effort. I love effort because I'm somebody who gives 110 percent effort when it comes down to relationships. So if you if you can't even give me that. If you can't even meet me halfway or at least or at least even try without me having to tell you, that's not the type of person I want to be with, you know, because I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to beg you to want me. I shouldn't have to beg you to work for me. I shouldn't have to beg you to show me affection. And if I have to do that or if I have to constantly remind you because you know how I am and not to say that like, oh, well, you got to shower me with gifts, this, that and the third every day. But like to me, affection is good conversation, you know, like digging inside of my personality, trying to figure me out trying to figure out who I am, you know, and like, and, and the, just the little things like showing me that you care, you know, like what's a, what's a breakfast here and there? Oh, oh, I was thinking about you, you know, like what's a getting me some food here and there or like coming, uh, meet me at the gym. Like just look, like if you know me, like little things, you know, when it's time to give gifts, like get me something that, cause everybody know if it's not going to be something that I want, don't, I'll, I will return it. And I'm gonna let you know I returned it. 
Like, I don't like people waste. I don't like wasting money, and I'm not going to let nobody waste no money on me. If I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, and, and it's like, but I expect that because I give that times three. I'm that type of person to where, like, I'm going to know your favorite color. I'm going to know your habits. I'm going to know how to get you through your ups and your downs. I will study you. I really will. And I'm going to figure you out. You know, so, and I don't expect, most people are not like that. So I don't expect people to at least meet me on such a high level of being that analytical when it comes down to being in a relationship. But I do notice the littlest efforts. So if you can't even give me the bare minimum of, or even 10% of what I'm giving you, you have no business being with me. And I have no business being with you. You know, so I say all that to say, going back to what I started this, this whole uh, live stream with, you know, know what you want and know what you're working on within yourself. Because if you if you can't even give that to yourself, are you or if you don't even understand what you truly bring to the table, you know, then it's like, what are you in a relationship for? What Like, what am I even talking to this person for? You know, it's like if y'all just want if you just needed somebody to to link up with and have good sex and just go out and do down the third, you should just get you a friends with benefits because that in a relationship is two totally different things. We got that so misconstrued these days. People people like to like to have sex their way into a relationship. They like to they like to smash their way into relationships or like, you know, fall into relationships when it's like, nah, you got to be conscious about that type of stuff. As beautiful and romantic as it may or may not be, you know, like, oh, well, we was just friends and then we just started hooking up and, you know, we just get each other. and Now we're dating. You know, that, that sounds ideal when things work out. But nine times out of ten, especially with young, young men these days, it's like you got to be direct and vice versa. I, I would say with young women, too, it's like you got to be direct. And I'm a direct person. I'm I'm just that you can ask all my friends. I'm very direct. I'm gonna let you know what this is. I'm gonna let you know how I feel. Don't ask no questions you don't want the answers to because I'm not sugarcoating it. You know, and I feel as though I've gotten this far in life and I've and I've my relationships have gotten so much better because I changed into that person. Well, I allowed myself to be a better version of that person because before I'd hold my tongue. Before I'd wait. Or like I just ignore it or brush off. Oh, there, you know, blah blah. This that and the third, but never because acknowledge simply acknowledging something is a form of effort, you know. So if you're if you really want to be with somebody and y'all talking, because that's that's the hard part, especially whenever you finally you're finally interacting with somebody you've been want, or like they you know they really check off your needs and your wants and stuff like that, and then it's time to start putting that work in. Y'all didn't got out the puppy phase, you know. Y'all didn't got this that and the third. Or just from out the gate, me I'm the I'm the straight from the gate type of person. It's like. You know, it's like I'm a I'm gonna start drilling you immediately, you know, and not like I'm, a, I'm on your head like that. But it's like I just need to see who I'm dealing with before I waste my time. I just don't like wasting my time, you know. So take all of that into consideration when you're looking for somebody and like know how to give yourself. Like I said before, know how to give yourself most of what you want or which because some people need to be shown how to appreciate others. You got people that come from broken homes. You got people that come from a lot of just dysfunctional family relationships and stuff like that. Some people genuinely don't know how to love. Some people genuinely don't know how to show appreciation or pay attention or like really figure a person out. And if that and if you're built for that type of journey and you want something like that, you feel like that person is really, you know, y'all meant for each other or like is that person is worth the effort, then do it. You know, that's your journey. But you know, if you somebody like me that can only take so much of that and I can only I'm only going to like get you so much of the way because we got other things to worry about and I know the, the level of relationship that I want. You know, it's like, then that's not for you. Don't waste your time. I didn't, I didn't did that. Do not waste your time. You're going to be sitting there frustrated, headaches, because you can only, I put it to you this way. You never really change a person. No, nobody can really change another person. It's really, it's really on the, on the scheme. Well, on the spectrum of like, okay, how can I help you develop for me and vice versa? Because that's all people are doing whenever you get in relationships, you know, we already, you got to think about it. I'm coming, especially as, as adults. It's like we come into relationships with our own patterns already, our own routines, our own money, our own habits and how we move through life and our own ideologies and stuff like that. And we just assume others think like us or move like us because they have similarities. There needs to be clarity. There needs to be a lot of clarity because you got some people out there that don't believe in reciprocity, that don't know how to uh, reciprocate. You got people out there that don't know how to even be in a proper relationship, but swear to God, they're the best thing on sliced bread. You know, so it's like you got to really take the time to be thorough, you know, and and it's not and I'm not trying to take the fun out of it, but because I mean, it is to each his own, you know, like it, it can be real fun. But at the same time, I just see so much, so much talk of heartbreak, so much talk of no more trust in people these days on social media. And like everybody's just downing relationships. And like, I hate how marriage is so played out, people trying to play it out. But 
it's because of ignorance and it's because of bad experiences and they and they try to label it on, on that type of stuff. What's going on, Kimmy? Uh they try to label it on that type of stuff, but at the same at the same time it's like people fail to take responsibility or accountability for their own actions. Don't sit there and be like, oh, I don't want to get married because I don't want to be tied down because these people ain't faithful and blah, 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 and this, that, and the third. And it's like, nah, you just keep attracting people that's not faithful or you don't know how to read through the lines or you end, or you end up being in relationships with people too early because you never got the chance. Because I, I say this, I'm not going to marry somebody until, what's up? Well, good morning, Cortland. Um, I'm not going to marry somebody until I've seen you at somewhat of your worst. I don't want to marry somebody based off of, oh, well, we've been going good. The sex is great. The dates are good. The conversation, they get along with this person, that person. I want to see your ugly side because that side is going to eventually come out. And if I haven't learned how to dealt with that, deal with that side or to see if that's something I can deal with or something that I feel as though is, what's the word? Is, is humane because you got some people that got some ugly sides that they, they put on a good face ball and then when that ugly side come out and it's too late say you're married it's like whoa like who did I and some people change when they get married you know so it's like you gotta you gotta really go through the test of time like put your put those four sessions are seasons are important yeah it they are and I love that see my my dad speaks in seasons when he coming out to when he talks to uh me and my my sister he always talks to us about life and seasons. There's, there's seasons for everything. And I love my mom has this thing called, uh, well, I don't know. The, I don't know how she would she would name it. But she says people come into your life to add, subtract, multiply and divide. And ever since I really started merging those two ideologies together, it's like my life, even outside of relationships, my life has been getting so much better because it's not it's such a great way to like guard yourself without being so uptight and having a. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say that on here, but like, you know, just being having to stick up your butt, you know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a great way of protecting yourself without being a killjoy. I'll say that, you know, but I'll go back to the other parts of, you know, uh, before you try to marry somebody, you know, cause I'm the type of person where it's like, I look forward to getting married and I like to get my like, granted. I don't, I don't be trying to spook people when I first get into relationships. But, you know, we'll talk about, you know, I'll, I'll kind of hint on it, you know, talk about like, well, how you, what's your viewpoints on kids and marriage and this, that, and the third. And I could see for me, somebody not wanting to have kids or wanting to have kids, that's not a deal breaker for me. Because, I mean, I'm on the fence about kids, you know, kids, especially these, this day and age is, man, look, my dogs all know, in my opinion, but I can't tell that to my mom and my mama be didn't jump through this dog on phone and put me in the headlock. But, um, you know, it's like, just, but just being real about it is like, I, you know, if, if you don't want to get married or that's not in if that's not in your your future, especially if we're trying to build a future or something like that, it's like I'm not going to waste my time because that's just me. I'm a re- like when I'm when I want or if I'm in a relationship, I'm a relationship type of person. When I'm single, I'm single. You know, so it's like I know that if I'm going to be in a relationship or if I'm chasing or pursuing a relationship, it's to get married. Or when I was in my phase, of, I think it was like nine months to a year I was single. And I, man, I loved it. I loved it. And that's, that's one thing. Y'all got to stop. Y'all got to stop putting this bad connotation on being single. Enjoy it. What you rushing to get married or be in a relationship for? Being single is, is it's a bigger opportunity and more time for you to actually be yourself and figure out who you are and discover who you are. Somebody Amber must be back home um, and discover and discover like what you really want out of life and what you really want out of yourself. Because if you don't, she said, not Tyler watching with me being interested. What's up, Tyler? But um, if you're not, if you're not taking the time to enjoy like being single and really enjoy figuring out who you are, then you're wasting time. What's up? You come over here. You come over here. Everybody, this is my baby Amber. We made it three years on the 11. This is my beautiful lady Amber. Mm-hmm. You got me a cinnamon roll. Mm-hmm. You trying to get me thick, y'all, and I appreciate it. You about to what? All right, boo. Um. Yeah, but if you don't if you don't take the time to enjoy really being single and like really take the time figuring yourself out or working on yourself before you actually decide to deal with another person or be with another person or you know be with you know just do just go through life with somebody else is it's, it's going to be hell and high water because when I know when I was single not only was I having fun and living and living it up but I was being I was being so real and I was so mad because like I, like I told you, I used to hop from relation to relationship sometimes, you know, and it was like, 
I felt as though I had a I had a sense of self, and I and I did. I wasn't lost, but I find that I would put a little bit of too much of myself into people. And when I when I became single for a while, and I was just like, you guys, you guys, all my friends, I was like, I'm just done with relationship. I don't want to be in a relationship. I want to get married. Blah blah blah. And Amber was literally the exception. I remember I prayed. I was like, God, I'm done with dating. I'm done with all of this. I just rather be single for the rest of my life. I'm sick and tired of going through the same stuff over and over. Just being young and naive. But I, but it was heartfelt, and I meant it. And I was like, cause I've been after Amber since we was kids, and. Uh, just so happened she had she had moved. You know, we went to different colleges. I went to UL. She went to Magnes, but then she was about to go to um somewhere northeast. I forgot exactly where, but you know, she we had a mutual friend, and I saw her on the snap on snap uh story, and I told her friend, I said, "Yo, is that Amber?" She was like, "Yeah." I said, "Man, I ain't seen nothing." You just like slide my number, blah 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 blah. But she was the exception. She was. I told God, I said, "Unless Amber randomly pop up out of nowhere, I'm really not trying to deal with nobody," you know. And then. I'll tell that story another day. I actually want to tell that story whenever, because I talked to her about being on the uh, on the live stream one day, and she said she down. Y'all know she she could be shy, shy, shy. But um, yeah, man, it, it's like that time. But the time I was single, and I was living my life, I was living my life, you know. And how can I expect to live my life with somebody if I haven't really enjoyed being by myself, by myself, you know, like. One of the biggest things a lot of people go through is like, it's like when they were single, they was out and blah, 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 blah. This, that, and the third. Oh, I would love. You know, it's how people like to reminisce. Oh, we was always out and having fun and blah, 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 blah. When you get in a relationship, oh, all of a sudden I'm tied down. Why are you pursuing or why are you accepting people that tie you down or slow you down to where you can't enjoy life whenever you get into relationships? Why? Unless you're doing some thought stuff like some, well, I, I'm even gonna, you know, I'm not even going to use that word. Unless you're doing some single stuff. Because when you're single, you, there's certain things you can and can't do. I will say that, you know, you got to respect, depending on your relationship, you know, respect the relationship. But I know for me, I was, man, look, I'm touring. I go from state to state a lot. You know, I got my own business. I be having my ups and downs with my business. You know, it's like, and when things are good, I'm traveling. I'm doing, you know, I love to travel. I love to go see stuff I've never seen before. I love to experience things I've never experienced before. And, and I wasn't accepting a partner that wasn't going to at least want to do that the majority of the time. Because I can, as much of a homebody as I can be, I can be out there getting it. You know, so if you're going to sit there and, because I, I don't know, you just got to look within, bro. If you're going to sit there and accept somebody for who they are and them dragging you down and y'all can't really be happy or find a medium between something, why are you dating? Why are you accepting that? You know, because you're accepting it. You don't have to be with that person. Oh, but, oh, what a sex is fire. Oh, they... They got money. Oh, they look good. They my type. This, that, and the third. Apparently not, because apparently you can these days you can get good sex a dime a dozen from anywhere from anybody. Because apparently everybody know who got this. Everybody know who got the best this. Everybody know like is this day and age we're living in. Everybody, everybody is FBI, and everybody know who to go to because this person got money or this girl got this. This guy got this. Well, find you somebody who got what you want but got more of what you need. Somebody that's going to pull you out your shell. Somebody you can grow with. Because if you don't take the time to dive into other people and dive, because that's, that's what's lacking these days. A lot of people are shallow. A lot of people are comparing themselves to what they see on social media or what they see other people do. You know, rather than looking inside themselves. I know for me, me personally, a social media relationship couldn't work. It really couldn't. It's like, I'm not saying I'm not going to post, you know, who I'm with. Because I love showing off who I'm with and who I have. But at the same time, it's like. I'm not, I don't want to look good on social media, but then you put the, in real life, you just say, oh, we look, we take a picture. You put the phone down, you a boring person who, who don't go through life, ain't got no goals, no ambitions. You just want to lay up and, and smash all day. It's like, man, some days we could do that, but it's like, I want to, I want to go through life. You know, like, let's go, let's go to a random restaurant. Let's take a trip. So I'm from Louisiana for all y'all that's not uh in here, I'm from Louisiana that's in here watching. So to me, Texas is a trip. So you know, let's go drive to Texas. Let's go to I love Austin. Let's go to Austin. You know, let's go go to the food truck areas and like explore the city. Let's go to Houston and do this. You know, let's go to Atlanta. Let's go to Cal like let's get out. You know, whenever whenever everything's good. So it's like that's the type of partner that I that I have and that I that I want. You know, but it's like if you're not and that's and that's another thing before I even go into that. Have a partner that knows how to give you space. Granted, I'm not somebody who plays video games a lot like I used to because I have a very addictive personality. I'm one of those people to where it's like if I like something and I start doing it, it's really hard for me to stop. It kind of consumes my life. That's re reasons why I'm so big on good routines and good habits and productive habits, because like and I've been like that since a kid. 
when I started getting into music and stuff like that, you could ask my mom and them out, whether it be a piano or drum, I'd be in that house making noise all day. And yes, my homework was done. I knock out my homework so fast just to make sure I can get on all my instruments and stuff like that. When I got into um track and soccer and all that type of stuff, I'm finding ways to be outside and playing soccer with the dog with the dogs. I got like a goal. We had when we used to live on Bank Street, we had this big backyard. Uh, I had got me like a little mini goal in the backyard, constantly playing outside. You know, so it's like for me, and I even started like a YouTube channel when I was doing Call of Duty Mobile and stuff like that. But I know for me, you know, I, I'm very addictive. You know, the reason why I watch what I indulge in too, because I, that can form very bad habits for me. It's just my personality. You know, so it's like find a partner that gives you personal space because you had a bunch of personal space when you were single. You could do what you want, go what you want, this, that, and the third. And I'm not saying, oh, well, I'm in a relationship. I can't go where I want, this, that, and the third. I'm not saying like put a GPS tracker, you know, like really don't trust your partner. Don't trust yourself, this, that, and the third. But have somebody you can be okay with being away from for a little minute. You know, it's like, can you actually be like I'm doing? Can you be in the studio and like work on your dreams or work on something for the community while your partner goes by their sister or goes by their friends? You know, can you can you really trust that? Do you can you can you find you a partner that's actually going to be okay with that? And granted, a lot of that comes with trust, too. But at the same time, it's like, like I said before, if you can't give it, don't expect it. If you can't give peace, understanding and all this other type of stuff, don't expect it. If you can't, and that's another thing, too, because y'all be y'all be quick to I ain't gonna say y'all. I ain't gonna talk to y'all up in here like y'all them people that's doing that. But social media be quick to bash people about like their sex life and stuff like that. If you can't even give no good sex, don't expect nothing back. You know, granted, you got you got some people that got the, the pretty privilege and this, that and the third. They got the body. So everybody gonna want to do this and the third. So the, the, the rule of ratio is going to happen. But at the same time, it's like. Like I'm I'm talking about literally every facet of a relationship. Stop expecting stuff that you can't give or that you're not willing to work towards. Because it's not that's just not realistic. And it and it's not it's really not gonna happen for you, baby. I'm just I'm just sad to say. And that's just how life works. But to say all I say all that to say, it's very important to keep taking steps forward as a person. And the only way you're really gonna get the partner that you really want or the oh well, I say uh, let's stop saying the want. The partner that you desire and need is when you continue to constantly work on yourself and be real with yourself. You know, right. Like Cortland said, willing. Oh, Joy said something too. I couldn't even see it. it says social media gives too much space for other people's opinions. Show, it show do. And you know, and that's another thing about social media. And look, I'm, I might sound crazy for what I'm about to say, but I feel as though social media didn't let people get too comfortable with this. Saying what they want to anybody and not getting touched. For all the other fighters up in here that understand what I'm talking about, you can only say so much about me before I don't have no more words to say to you. And I'm a very patient. I can be a very patient person. But at the same time, you can keep jibber jabbing, gallivanting, and all this, that, and the third with your mouth if you want to. Don't let me see you. Because I'm the type of person, I'm going to check you in person. You could say this, that, and the third about me on social media. Don't let me see you. I may not hit you at first, but I'm going to run up on you. I'm going to be like, hey, let's talk. I don't care who you with. I don't care where you at. Let's talk. You know, but like we've grown so far away from physicality in real life to where it's like people just don't know how to like appreciate real life and watch what they're saying and be real about what's going on. You got a lot of keyboard warriors, but look, like prime example on here on Facebook. I noticed that a lot of like when I talk about political things and stuff like that, a lot of people got some stuff to say to negate that or to come. Well, well, actually, blah, 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 blah. You know, but when it comes out to talk about stuff that matters, like when I'm talking about like black oppression is that in the third you know, them same people that I know don't really agree with what I'm saying are the conspiracy theories that I be talking about. Like, they don't agree with what I'm saying that ties into that. They have nothing to say. But you so big and bold over here, you want to be a keyboard because you know if you come at something that I'm not saying I don't care about the conspiracy theories that I talk about, but, but I'm black. So if I'm talking about black stuff, of course, it matters that much more to me because, you know, if you really come at me reckless like that, I'm going to come at you back. And granted, I'm not, look, I'm not no, I'm not an instinctually violent person. Well, I, I can't be violent. But not, not just, what I'm saying is like, I'm not like, I'm just a beat up everybody type of person. But it's like, I, it's very few strikes with me. I'll say that. If you get very few, you don't even get three. You get about one and a half. You know, so it's like, just, just, just make sure that you're dealing with yourself before you can try to deal with somebody else. Because you can't be singing and playing Cortland song come through. Whenever you don't even know how to come through for yourself, honestly. And if y'all ain't heard that song, please go listen to that song. Cortland can sing his behind off and play keys. Cortland Mack. 
come through. Cortland Mack, come through. One more time. Cortland Mack, come through. It's an amazing song. But um, before I wrap this up, because, I mean, we can only talk so much about relationships. I, and, I, and I only want to say so much before I start getting other people in here about relationships because there's certain topics uh, I, I'm trying to save. You know, I'm, I'm coming on here almost every day, so I, I got to save a little juice. But um, I'll wrap it, I'll wrap this up with this before we do our um our ending affirmations. I'll say this: somebody, the person that you, the type of person that you need, should outweigh and outbalance the type of person that you want. Because if I would have stayed stubborn on what I wanted when I was younger, back up into what I you know want now and need now and stuff like that, I wouldn't be half as happy as I am. Because that plays a role into your real life as well. When you know what you want and need out of out of a relationship, that also means you know what you want and need out of friends, out of associates, out of your job, out of your dreams, out of your desires and stuff like that. So if you don't know how to compartmentalize, well, to do it in a healthy way, to compartmentalize those things and those people, then just take it's OK to step back. It's OK to be single. You got people out there that's been single for years and it's OK. It's OK. Like, don't let nobody rush you into a relationship. Don't let no family members try to rush you into a marriage or kids or this, that, and the third. We live in a day and age to where it's like things are changing. Society is in a very pivotal shift. Society is, well, civilizations typically crash after the first 500 years and has to be, have to be reborn. We are way overdue for a societal crash, a reset, and it's starting right now. You know, so times are changing. Things are changing. Economy is changing. People are changing. So the spirit world is changing. The physical world is changing. You know, so don't let nobody punk you into no relationship or no marriage or kids or something you don't want to do. Be OK with yourself. Fine, because the reason why you the reason why you probably been lonely for so long is because if you were to get in a relationship, it's going to be the most toxic thing you probably ever dealt with. Well, I can't find love. I, they just never stick this, that and the third. That's a sign. That's a sign. You're looking for love in the wrong places or you ain't looking for love in the right places within yourself. Fill your holes and your voids yourself. Yes, I chose the right words. Catch it if you're going to catch it. Fill your holes and your voids the right way for yourself before you expect somebody else to do that. Because people, man, look, you could you could be in a relationship with somebody 10, 20 plus years and y'all could both write a book on who y'all feel as though you are as a person. And the book will still never be written exactly the same. You can have friends that's been with you since you was kids and all of those different friends can write a book about you and none of them books going to be exactly the same. Why? Because we it's an interpersonal thing. Only you really understand 100 percent of who you are and it's your duty to be able to express 100 percent of who you are. So when somebody tries to learn that or you try to present that to somebody, you understand how and why you tick. So whenever they are face with certain things about you or they're trying to learn more about you you can express yourself you can explain yourself of who you are and what you do because if not now we both trying to figure out who who i am and that's dangerous i don't want to figure out who i am with somebody else who really don't care or who is using me or who is really trying to just get something out of it and dip because they'll make you feel as oh yeah this is who you are because they know that's what you need to be to get what they want out of you and then say it don't work You've not only given your all to somebody else, you've given what you thought was your all to somebody else. And now you got to go through a rebirth. Now you got to be broken down all over again, which hurts. I didn't been there. It hurts. You know, so I'll wrap it up with saying with saying this. Really know who you are. Take the time to love who you are and accept who you are. Don't deny. Don't deny yourself the good and the bad. Learn who you are. Take the time to see what your ugly self look like and what your beautiful self look like in order to tap into whoever or whatever you need in life but we're gonna end with our affirmations so whatever i say you guys say it out loud back to yourself because i'm ready to go do what bust this cinnamon roll up because i'm hungry and i have two clients to train back to back this morning so i'm in a little earlier a little sooner than normal i am loved say it with me i am loved i am amazing i am okay being with myself i will learn myself i will figure me out I am in love with myself. I am not lonely. I am okay with myself. I will find what I need. I will attract what I need. I will be what I need. I believe in what I need.
and I receive what I need. All right. I love y'all. It's Cinnamon Roll calling my name. I will talk to y'all tomorrow. God spare peace and chicken grease.